This week, all eyes were on why Ghani and Port Moresby as the nation awaited the announcement of the money plan for 2023. As Parliament met on Tuesday morning at 10 a.m., the Treasurer Ian Lynn Starkey and the Finance Minister Rainbow Paita were in the 2023 National Budget Press Lockup session at the State Function Room, delivering and outlining the 2023 budget. The theme for this year's budget, implementing the vision, a central part of the Marape Rosso's government to take back PNG and stay in the course, which was framed and developed around in line with 10 principles for the budget design, which are spending the money we have more wisely raise the revenue fairly, finance the debts cheaply, leverage friendly international support more intelligently, focus on growth in the agriculture, forestry and fisheries sectors, SMEs and informal economy, distribute resources benefits more equitably, stimulate non-resource growth back to at least 5% annually, comprehensive government SOE reform program for cheaper energy, internet and water, getting foreign exchange inflows more freely and create at least 10,000 jobs annually. Treasurer Ian Lin Starkey wasting no time in revealing the money plan of 24 billion Kina in 2023. Yeah, this year, um, unlike last year, um, we haven't had our, our budget um, advertised uh, on the front pages of our dailies. So I'm pleased to announce that we will be tabling today a record 24. 1,567 million Kina budget, um, and that's with revenue projected at 19,582 uh, million, uh, resulting in a deficit of 4.9 billion Kina. Now, I know that. According to the Price Waterhouse Coopers 2023 budget report, the budget outlines four core objectives to support PNG's development strategy over the medium term. These objectives are designed to improve governance. The objectives will also arrest erosion in social and economic development enablers and improve the strategic positioning of government policy to the human development targets. The objectives are strong economy, connect PNG, going rural and good governance. With government debt an issue among ordinary Papua New Guineans, the Treasurer is signalling out the Marape government's plan to clear debts. Reassure all of us sitting here today, if I can just move very quickly, very quickly uh, to our five-year medium-term plan. I want to assure all of us that the Marape Rosso government, the point of difference between ourselves and previous governments, we have a clear plan, we have a clear plan to eliminate all debt, by 2034 and we are very much committed to a target date of 2027, the end of this 11th session of the Parliament, to have a budget surplus. Uh, our first surplus hopefully uh, since 2010. Director of Independent Think Tank PNG Institute of National Affairs Paul Barker was present at the press lockdown and this was his thoughts regarding inflation and the government's outlook. If war in uh, Ukraine ceased tomorrow, then we'd see some of those prices coming down, some of those costs, some of the inflation rate coming down. The budget is uh, based on not including those new uh, proposed projects, so uh, really one can't expect the budget to be growing that much. They're forecasting uh, a significant increase in revenue, maybe uh, on the optimistic side. Persistent price shaping will also be an issue for the government and many Papua New Guineans' cost of living pressure will rise in the next few months, with inflation expected to average at 6.2% this year, with Australian headline inflation to peak at 8% this month. The Marape government has recognised this and in the 2023 budget, 590 million kina was considered as appropriate to further ease cost of living pressures for households in 2023. The household assistance package consists of 200 80 million kina in income tax cuts for 2023 through the temporary lifting of the tax-free threshold. 150 million kina on cuts to excise taxes on fuel for the first six months of 2023 and 160 million kina to fund school project fees. This is a caring, responsible and responsive government. Today I announce a further package of 590 million kina in cost of living relief. This 
includes tax cuts of <clears throat> up to 63 kina per fortnight for those earning more than 20,000 kina per year for 2023. A very serious increase in take-home pay. According to the government's budget allocation from a report from accounting firm Deloitte, in 2023, five key areas will benefit the most from the budget. Law and justice sector, which will see an increase in the police force from 5,000 to 8,400 personnel by 2027. Education. The budget funding for the education sector sees a 102.2% increase from the 2022 supplementary budget. This includes major expenditures on the government tuition fee subsidy, higher education loan programs, and curriculum development. Provinces, provincial administrators will have a bigger budget to work with, seeing their funding climb into 5.2 billion kina to fund a range of capital and operational provincial activities. This is a further move back to decentralization. Transport, key to connect PNG and open economic corridors, the transport sector will see a 52.8% increase in the 2023 budget from the 2022 supplementary budget with just over 2 billion kina allocated for capital development. Employees, individuals paying personal income tax being primary employees will see a reduction in the tax through the increase in the tax-free threshold to 20,000 kina per annum. For those earning above 20,000 kina, this will put in an extra 1,650 kina for the year in their pockets from the prior threshold of 12,500 kina. They are focusing on, on the key areas. Uh, they are focusing on law and order, as we've highlighted. Um, if you can't actually get law and order in place, you're not going to grow the economy and, and then you're not going to be able to get services to communities uh, and so on. So. For most people in the country, they're really scratching their heads at the moment and saying, you know, what is the safety and security of ourselves and our, our kids in the future? So increasing the police numbers is obviously an important issue. In contrast, five areas will have missed out in the 2023 budget. They are banks. The banking sector is again targeted to raise revenues with a substantial increase in the corporate tax rate to 45%. How this will impact customers, shareholders and general liquidity in the market is difficult to quantify. The hope is the government's effective use of these funds can offset such negative impacts. Non-tax revenues. State agencies and authorities will be affected by the Non-Tax Revenue Administration Act. The sweeping of non-tax revenues collection into a central fund is expected to raise revenue by 550 million kina. But history suggests this will create difficulties for the affected bodies to manage their costs and for supplies to these bodies to be paid in a timely manner. On top of this, the 2023 budget allocation to administration being the funding for government agencies and authorities is one of the few areas to see a decline in budget funding from 2022. State-owned enterprises, even if SOEs are excluded from non-tax revenue requirements, they won't be left alone. Treasury intends to engage quarterly with SOEs and there will be renewed pressure on them to improve their contributions to government revenue, particularly Kumo Petroleum Holdings Limited, whose dividends are budgeted at 1.3 billion kina. This will put pressure on the SOE's own investment objectives. Utilities. While the utility sector is allocated an increase in funding of 7.3% on the prior year, given the significant investment required for businesses and households to get access or more reliable access to key utilities, the increased funding would not appear to be enough to accelerate the investments required in this sector. Alcohol manufacturers, a 493% tax on alcoholic drinks that have a high percentage of alcoholic content. This government was re-elected on a platform to make this a fairer and more economically independent country. Our Prime Minister has committed to ensure that no place and no one will be left behind as we develop and grow this country in a more sustainable way. Mr. Speaker, I am proud that this budget implements this vision. For the 2023 budget, expanding the PNG revenue base is clearly an important part of the government's plan to return the budget to surplus. However, it will be important to balance the need to grow the economy with the need to broaden the revenue base. This will be an important balancing act. This is the first budget following the election and it is important to see the government remains committed to growth and budget repair despite challenging conditions.